Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this video I'll be talking about materials and texture mapping in Rhino 6 for Windows. So I'm using Rhino Render as my default render plugin right now and I've got my materials panel open on the right side of the interface. If you don't see that, you can expose it through the panels drop down menu. I also like my um, thumbnail area to be located on the left side. So you can use this menu icon here to toggle horizontal layout. And I'm going to go into rendered mode. And rendered mode in Rhino is also available through the display panel and that drop down list. And this will allow us to see any materials applied to the model and the textures within those materials. So if you have an image of some wood in a material and you apply it to the model, that image of wood is called a texture map and how that texture gets applied is called texture mapping. So we'll go into the materials panel. I'll click the plus symbol here and choose import from material library. This will bring up a Windows file browser. I'll go into the wood section of the Rhino material library and I have my view set to icons so I can see the little thumbnails. I'll load in this material and that material has a texture in the color channel. This texture is downloaded uh, on demand to this render content folder and so you'll need an internet connection for that to be downloaded. Um, if you're working offline and you want all the textures in the Rhino material library you can use the command download library textures beforehand uh, before you're offline and you can download all um, it's around 1300 different textures all at once uh, locally to your machine. So let me isolate um, these two objects in the scene and I'll right click the material swatch and choose assign to selection. Alternately you can drag and drop to objects in the scene to apply the material. I'm going to go into my display panel here and I'm going to turn on edges and isocurves so that you can see the topology of these poly surfaces. So the U and V directions on this top piece here, they're flowing nicely in the direction that I want the grain to actually go. And on the legs, the U and V directions of these surfaces are not flowing in the directions that I want the grain to go. So these are two separate cases and this one is the easiest one. So I'll take a look at this first. Now if I turn off edges and isocurves again, you can more easily see the grain of the material up uh, of the texture in the material. And you can see it's not flowing like I'd um, prefer along that curvature. Instead it's a projection from six planes in unison and that's called world coordinate system box. So that's the texture mapping method of all materials in the library by default. So if I go select this object and go to the texture mapping section for it in properties texture mapping you'll see this message that says as much. It says WCS or World Coordinate System is being used. So if you go over to the material, click on the texture in its color channel, you'll see its mapping section indicates the same, that this is World Coordinate System box style. It's a really easy thing to switch it back to be by surface UV so it follows the isocurves just by selecting mapping channel 1. Now this is no longer based on the size that this swatch would be in the real world in relation to your model units. Now it is a repeat value independent of the size of the model. And so it got pretty pixelated here. So I'm going to change the repeat value to 8 by 8 there. And now I can see the grain again. Now the texture isn't flowing like I want right here so I'll select the object, go back into properties, texture mapping, and now that it's set to use mapping channel 1, it is using the surface domain of each surface in the poly surface. I'll click on the UV editor icon here, and the command line asks me for what is the, the rectangle for the UV editor. You click somewhere and then just click somewhere else. It doesn't matter how big this square is. It's just for your own display of what are the flattened render meshes. You're going to get this docked um, set of controls off to the side and this is the UV editor. So it has options like what is the transparency of the texture on the UV editor and do you highlight the selection in the UV editor on the model. I'm going to um, get two views of the model here so I can zoom in on one side. 
So I'll go into rendered mode for the top here as well. So I'll use this for the UV editor and I'll change my texture transparency so you can see that. And I'll zoom in here on the edge of the model that I'm working on this part right here. So this is the rim around uh, and it's really simple. You just take the gumball, rotate this, hold down shift and release and I've rotated it 90 degrees. So now the grain is flowing this way. Now if I scale this with the gumball, more grain is shown in this area. So whatever this is on top of in the UV editor, that's what's going to get shown in the display and also in any rendering that you do with it. So these are the surface UVs, but we're adjusting their layout in the UV editor. Now these two pieces are the top and bottom of the seat respectively. I want the texture to go the other way, so I'll rotate this hold down shift so it rotates 90 degrees. And if I zoom out a little bit, I might want less grain to show, so I'll select both of these, hold down shift over this handle on the gumball to scale in 2D. And if I scale it down, then less grain is actually shown over these sections, like that. And now the most important part, after you like the changes that you've done to the UV editor, you have to go over to the settings and click apply. And so now that'll change the, the actual UVs for that object. So that was the simple case. We're just switching the material, the texture in the material to by surface or mapping channel one, which will use whatever is set here in properties texture mapping for channel one, which is surface. And then when we edited it, it became a custom object, um, but it's still mapping channel one. All right, so this, the legs are a little bit more complicated. So um, let me hide this part or I'll just isolate the legs now. And the legs have a bunch more surfaces than that piece had. So we've got these fillets and you can see the edges denoting their uh, borders right there. So what I'm going to do is select this object and show you what the UVs look like right now by surface. So I'll click on the UV editor again, just drag out that rectangle. So each surface in the poly surface gets separately unwrapped here, gets flattened. And you could move these around and adjust them just like we did, um, but that's not going to do anything for the U-shaped sections right here where I want the grain to flow along that curvature. Um, and it would be a lot of work to line all these up. You could use vertex O snaps to do it, but it would be a lot more work than you have to do. So I'll cancel out of the UV editor, select this poly surface, and in properties texture mapping, I'll use this icon right at the beginning, unwrap. Now unwrap is going to let me select seams in the model that Rhino can rip apart when creating that flattened render mesh, the UVs. So select seams is asked for in the command line and you can come around here and just left click those edges, but you can also click the word chain up in the command line and use a chain continuity that works on your model. So if I click on an edge now, if it goes to the next edge and it's a tangent connection, it'll just pick up that edge as well. So enter, click chain again, pick up that, enter, click chain again, pick that, enter, and then I'll drag two fence selections around the um, four-sided boundaries at the very bottom. And then enter to finally unwrap the result based on those seams. So I didn't select these seams right here and here on the borders of those fillets. Now if I turn off my edges and zoom in, you can see the grain is flowing along that now. Um, so the larger sections are fixed just through that one unwrap, but the U-shaped sections are not fixed yet, so that'll be the next step. So I'll select this, open the UV editor, and you'll see how the UV editor's changed now. So we've got this piece and this piece, and the U-sections are like that and that. So I want these to be straightened out. I want these to be linear. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So let me zoom in on this so you can see the grain and how it's not flowing correctly right there. And I'm going to uncheck highlight selected so that you can continue to see this grain as I work here in the UV editor in the top view. 
So the first step is um, I want to use the command dupe border. And that'll create a polyline around this mesh object. Then I'll explode. And it's exploding into 93 segments here. I'll zoom in and hold down control and click to remove its juncture to the rest of it. I just want this outer edge. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Control click and then with everything still selected I'll run the join command. And that gives me this curve right here and that's all I want. So I'll run the length command and in the command line I get a report of how long it is. Um, just round up so we'll call it 21 and a half, or you could even call it 21, probably be fine. So I'm going to draw a line, and, um, and I'm going to make one click, and then for the end of it, I'll just type 21, enter, and that limits the next point to be 21 units. Then I'll just hold down shift and click and enter, so I have this straight line. Now I'm going to use the flow command in Rhino. So that's transform and flow. Select the object to flow. That will be these, this render mesh. Enter. And the next step is really important. Uh, by default, it'll say copy equals yes here. And you don't want to make a copy. In fact, you can't make a copy of this. So you would get an error message if you try. So say, no, I'm not going to make a copy. And then the base curve is that joined polyline right here. And then the target curve is right there. And there is our, our mesh now straightened out. So we went from this U shape to a perfectly straight line. And you can see what happens here in the perspective view. We're now having that texture flow in the direction that we want. And all these, well, these are the little islands for the feet. But all these curves we no longer need. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other side of it. So I'll use dupe border, explode, zoom in, control click, zoom in, control click, join the result while well, it's all still selected, select this curve, run the length command, call this one 22, make a line, 22, enter, hold down shift, click, enter. So I got my target line now. And then I'll use the flow command, making sure that it's not a copy. And the base curve will be my joined polyline. And my target curve will be that. And so now I've got the flow happening the same way on both sides. And the same goes uh, if you wanted to scale this, it's going to show more or less grain. You could scale both of them in unison to change how that grain is shown on both sides. And then last, uh, lastly, apply those changes in the UV editor. And all the curves that remained, uh, we don't need those, so you can just delete that. And so now we've got that grain flowing as I want on this complex um, texture mapping scenario on the legs. I'm going to um, bring back the other pieces and just isolate this for a second as well to show you one last thing here um, because uh, really it's the exact same workflow on the other pieces. So there's no need to show you that as well. Um, so these these two pieces here have this sharp, sharp edge. So rather than filleting those edge and then having to deal with those fillets in the UVs as well, what we can do is go into properties and use these custom render mesh modifiers such as edge softening. So if I turn on edge softening, it's going to round the edges of the render mesh and the texture mapping is preserved. So that render mesh property here, if I do 0.15, make it a little bit bigger is going to give me a slight round on those edges and make any visualization I do from this uh, model more realistic. And that's an introduction to materials, the material library and texture mapping in Rhino 6 for Windows. Thanks for watching.